What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fish O'Clock. I'm John Bocharaya, your host. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to fabricate a mounting plate for your bow mount trolling motor. It's fish! Now before we get started, you're gonna need a few tools. First thing you're gonna need are some clamps. Then you'll need a rivet gun, some rivets, a orbitable jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. These are the fine tooth blades. Some uh, cut off grinding discs an angle grinder, a drill, and probably most important thing here is a piece of preferably 5200 aluminum. Now this right here is 1 8 inch in thickness. Um, I also have some aluminum brackets here that I'm going to be using to strengthen the, the plate. Um, I actually bought this from uh, Tiny Boat Nation. I think it was about three hundred dollars um after tax so all in all not a bad deal uh, i know there's other places you can buy these mounts these uh pieces of aluminum mat locally if you can find those for cheaper uh, that's okay as well so let's go ahead and get started okay so the first step is going to be to create a cardboard template of the bow mount itself so to do this, I put some cardboard over the bow of my boat and I used a permanent marker to just draw a shape around uh, that cardboard box. Um, so to determine the actual size, I created a uh, template of the surface area of the trolling motor that I'm going to be mounting. And that helped me kind of determine how large of a mounting surface that I actually need. Um, just bear in mind, I also had plans to mount a fish finder as well as some lights. Now what I'm going to do is take that cardboard cutout and I'm going to trace um, with the permanent marker over the sheet of aluminum. So now I'll go ahead and drill two holes on either side of the mount. This just makes it easier to cut the entire mount out of the sheet. And now for my favorite part, we finally get to cut the mount. So I start with my jigsaw and I go pretty slow. Um, now this was at night so it's kind of hard to see. Um, and I did a pretty good job of following the uh, permanent marker. However, there were some spots that I had to grind down after the fact. So when you're doing this, uh, just if you can, make sure to do this during the daytime. It does make things significantly easier. Now that I have my completed cutout, I check the fit by placing it over the bow. I mark the places where uh, the cut was slightly off so that I can grind it down. Alright, so now that we've got our aluminum bracket about 90% done, um, I'm going to cut a piece of this aluminum uh, tubing right here. I'm just going to mark the spots where I'm going to cut it and we're going to have to do a tapered cut uh, because of the the design of the bow, how it um, how it's angled like this. Uh, so I'm going to mark that.
Okay, now that we have our section of aluminum pipe cut out, aluminum tubing, um, I have clamped the piece to the mounting plate and I've just measured and marked some rivet holes. I'm doing them a few inches apart. I'm going to put about 10 rivets in there. So now I'm going to take my drill and I've got a 3 16 inch drill bit. guys I'm back um, just working on this in shifts since I have work I only get about an hour a day uh, it's been a few days now and um, I did notice a problem with the rivets uh, well I guess you could say not necessarily a problem with the rivets but a problem with the way that I was riveting so these are flush mount rivets and let me see if I can capture it on camera um, you can see, if you look, that the rivet should sit flush on this piece of aluminum here, but actually, but actually it's, it's sticking up a little bit. And the reason being is because I didn't use the, uh, there is a countersink drill bit that you need to use to get these to sit flush. So I did order that from Amazon and that is over here. Uh, oh. So it's a kit that I ordered. And they're pretty easy to use. I've got this one on. You basically, you drill your hole with your bit and then you come in with the countersink and a lot of people will put a little piece of tape uh, on the countersink. Um, on the spot that they're countersinking to. But basically, the end result is you get a rivet that sits flush with the aluminum plate, like these two right here. So, um, I wish I had the time to re-rivet all of those, but I just don't have the time and it's a lot of work. So I'm gonna leave those for now. Also, when I put on, I don't know if I'm gonna go with the gator skin or uh, I've got some off-brand Amazon uh, seafoam knockoff type uh, material that I used on my boat. It's this kind of this gray with the white line stuff. So I might, I'm going to end up probably putting some of that over it. So it shouldn't really matter, but um, just for the sake of the video, I was showing you guys the, the countersink drill bits. Uh, I think that set was about $25 from Amazon. So not a bad price. Um, next time I do one of these, I'll make sure to use that countersink bit, but yeah. Okay, so now I'm just gonna finish riveting the plate. Um, I put rivets every few inches, um, and I think in total I put in about 30 rivets in total, so uh, just don't be stingy with the rivets. Make sure you use enough of them.
So after I completed riveting the metal plate to the boat, I noticed that there was a small gap between the existing um, bow plate and then the fabricated mounting plate. So that gap was about a half inch or so. Um, the washers that were provided by Minn Kota for the trolling motor uh, were not long enough. So I bought a piece of quarter inch HDPE sheet from Amazon and I kind of cut that to spec so, so that beautiful. the uh, trolling motor uh, would uh, fit. Now it's time for the hard part. We'll actually be bolting the trolling motor onto the mounting plate. Now you have to get a second person to help you with this otherwise this is going to be very very difficult. But make sure to follow the instructions uh, in the Minn Kota installation manual or your trolling motor installa installation manual. Um, it does specify exactly how and where to place it. Um, in my case, I put the trolling motor as close to the keel, which is the center line of the boat as possible. Um, this did mean that the trolling motor was gonna slightly uh, hang off the boat, which is definitely not my favorite. Um, that does pose risks for uh, damage uh, when you're trailering or when you're docking. So. Um, if possible, try to follow that installation manual, um, <clears throat> getting that motor closest to the keel without having it uh, sit over the side of the boat uh, to prevent it from being damaged. And now that I found a pretty good spot for it that I like, um, I'll go ahead and mark uh, those uh, holes so that I can drill the holes out. Now, one lesson that I learned is it's very difficult to drill um, kind of with the trolling motor there. So make sure that you mark the holes, remove the motor, and then drill them separately um, because my drill was kind of, um, when I drilled, it was actually scraping against the side of the trolling motor. So you definitely don't want that. So to prevent further damage from occurring, um, put the trolling motor exactly where you want it, mark the holes, drill and then when you have the drilled holes um, you just put the bolts in and you're done so overall i'm pretty happy about the outcome of the installation the aluminum plate really provided a good permanent solution for mounting the trolling motor to the bow now i anticipate that this solution will last a lifetime so it's better than say using a, a piece of wood as a mounting plate or a mounting surface. In addition, I also have the ability to add additional accessories and I've also mounted my Garmin fish finder to that aluminum plate. Wiring was relatively simple but I have a temporary solution in place until I permanently install the battery which I plan to do at a later time. All right, guys, so that about concludes it for this video. Uh, if you got any value whatsoever from this video, please hit that like button. Comment below if you have anything you'd like to add or if you see anything that I could have done better or different. Um, I'm definitely open to new suggestions. Uh, I did not cover the portion of the installation that in included the electrical components. Uh, I felt like... YouTube pretty well documented that. So if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments below. All of the equipment that I used, um, including the materials and the tools, I have links to that in my YouTube description. Uh, please, if you would like to go ahead and do this installation, uh, if you purchase those products through those links, I'm an affiliate, so I do receive some commission and it does help the channel out a bit. So again, thanks again for watching this video. Um, I guess I'll see you on the next one.